All right, what is going on, folks on YouTube and those of you watching live on Twitch? Today, uh, for some of our end of league crafting, uh, we are going to be working on two adorned magic jewels uh, simultaneously. Um, these are ones that I have prepared over the past few days. Um, uh, currently, we have uh, two different uh, synth jewels here, both of which uh, have three synthesis mods that are all perfect tier one rolls, uh, along with the uh, two subsequent explicits that uh, I've chosen. Um, and on top of that, we also have the Gilded Fossil, uh, which is the one that affords the item cells for much more to vendors. And you get that by using a Primitive Chaotic Resonator with the Gilded Fossil here. The purpose of which uh, is to have a corrupted modifier from a Vol Orb replace the line of text item sells for much more to vendors. When you use a Vol Orb, uh, it has a 1 in 4 chance to give a corrupted implicit. And that corrupted implicit, if there are multiple implicits on the item currently, it will uh, choose to re replace one of them randomly. Uh, the item sells for much more to vendors is included in that. Uh, and so since that has no real functional purpose, um, it, aside from the fact that when you, uh, if you were to sell it to a vendor, you'll see it gives you a hidden item and uh, that gives you a randomized uh, currency amount. Uh, I think upwards of a mirror shard you can get from doing that. But that's what it means when it sells itself for much more to vendors. For our purposes, we are trying to replace that with a uh, actual uh, corrupted implicit. Uh, the reason for doing this and the reason why we're crafting them as magic items uh, is because of the jewel, uh, the adorned. And so I've actually made a couple of these uh, that I'll show you right now uh, why it's set up. So uh, if you see above me here, wait, this one, right? So this is the adorned. It was added this patch um, and you can see it has increased effect of uh, jewel socket passive skills containing corrupted magic jewels. Uh, the highest roll that you can possibly get, which we have on ours, is 150%. That means that uh, if you have a magic jewel, once you equip the adorned uh, for every magic jewel that you put in, uh, all of the modifiers on it will be increased uh, times 2.5, right? So in the case here, we have 40 flat life. That means that with the adorned equipped, by putting this jewel on it subsequent to the adorned, it would actually give 100 flat life. And that would apply to the 12% crit multi too. Now, the really powerful thing about the Adorned, uh, of course, um, aside from the fact that you could even just do this on a regular two-modded jewel and it would still be quite good, um, Synthesis mods obviously exist, uh, and they do not have any impact on whether the rarity of an item, right? You can have a normal item that has Synthesis mods, um, you can have a magic item with Synthesis mods, and you can have a rare item with Synthesis mods. In fact, you can have unique items with them as well. Um, and so... Uh, you know, the downside of using the Adorned, of course, is that it limits you to only two modifiers. And the upside is that it multiplies them by 2.5, right? So that means that it's basically allowing you to have the equivalent of five total mods, right? Because you're you're getting half as many modifiers, but 2.5 times is strong. However, when you implement synthesis mods on top of that, right, you basically get three additional modifiers that you can roll as you wish with Vivid Vultures and Krejci Chimerals. And then if you are able to put a Gilded Fossil and a Vol Orb on there, you can actually get a sixth modifier. Now, uh, Synthesis Implicits tend to be about half as strong as the Explicits. So if we were to consider those, um, you know, approximately two additional Explicits, it's it's the equivalent of having roughly 10 modifiers um, as opposed to a if it were a rare item. So these are incredibly powerful. Uh, and you can see above uh, my, as well, I've, I've got a couple of the ones that I've made already. Uh, so you can see the first one, we've got 4% uh, damage, 3% attack speed with bows, 5% crit multi with bows, 5 attack and cast speed during onslaught, 12% crit multi, 40 to maximum life. And then right beside it there, you can see that it, what it actually gives with the adorned. 10% increased damage, 7% attack speed with bows, uh, 10 to crit multi with bows, 100 to flat life, 12% increased attack speed during onslaught, 12% 12, 12 increased cast speed during onslaught, and 30 to crit multi, which means in total we get 42% uh, multi, 19% attack speed, 10% damage, 100 flat life, and 12% cast speed from that one jewel, right? Um, now that's obviously so incredibly strong, and uh, you can do that multiple times. Another thing that makes this in incredibly strong, as you can see here, one of the things that really takes it to the next level is the Voices Jewel, which uh, again, you'll see up above me here, um, where it, uh, it adds three additional passive skill slots and uh, only one of them grants nothing. So um, functionally, where you can see up here, uh, that uh, basically you spend three points on the cluster as you would, and then one blank point, and then you get three jewel sockets, right? So that means it's seven points in total, right? So it's seven points to get three times this. And if we if we're to if we're taking a look up here, right, we can see that 
uh, <clears throat> above if we were to take that same thing, right? 42% crit multi, that's 126% crit multi, right? 19% attack speed, 57% attack speed. 100 flat life, 300 flat life. 10% damage, 30% damage, right? So that's seven points for all of those, which uh, on a technical basis would make the adorned uh, not only the most point efficient uh, thing that you could take in the game, uh, it's actually better than most notables, right? So uh, if you're to look at, uh, if you're playing a bow build, for example, um, a very strong crit multi notable might be 30%, right? Uh, the fact that you can go and get a 30% notable that's considered basically mandatory for any crit build and have that applied to seven individual points on top of like the best life modifier, right? Like the mastery for life is 50 flat life, right? Um, you're basically getting like half half of a Calm's heart by those points as well, not to mention the attack speed. It's just absolutely ludicrous what you can do with them. Uh, and not to mention with different abyss implicits, um, you of course can kind of tailor it to what your uh, needs are. So you can also get multiple one passive voices. As you can see, I currently have two of them, uh, but you could even get a third down here. And if you really wanted to stretch it, you could probably go for a fourth as well. Uh, now these are very expensive, but I just wanted to kind of give you that um, underlying information as to what the what the reasoning is for this and why um, you know when I break down the numbers of what it's cost, why uh, I would bother doing this and why it's a good idea and potentially something you might want to look at for yourself. So. Um, the first step, of course, is to find a jewel that has three implicit modifiers uh, with synthesis. Um, ideally, you want to buy one that has one of the rarest mods you're looking for already. That's going to vary very build to build. Uh, but the two rarest ones typically that are, are, are more or less universally good um, is four to five percent attack and cast speed during onslaught, since onslaught is basically a necessity for all builds these days. Um, and three percent move speed while phasing, which similarly with quartz flask is especially if you're playing a suppression based build, you're going to have because um, that means you're going to get seven percent move speed uh, for one implicit or 12 percent attack speed and 12 percent cast speed, which is just absolutely obscene. Uh, in terms of um, the uh, uh, implicit modifiers for ourselves for these magic jewels uh, for the bow build that we're putting them together for. Uh, on the left uh, here, you can see that I've put together uh, the ones that we would consider taking. So with respect to the Abyss jewel modifiers, um, we have 4 to 5% crit multi with bows, 3% move speed while phasing, 4 to 5% increased attack and cast speed with onslaught. And those, those can only show up on Abyss, uh, Abyssal jewels. And then uh, regular jewels, so Cobalt's, Crimson's, or uh, Viridians, we have as the regular jewels only. So uh, those uh, plus two energy shield for enemies hit by attacks, or plus one mana gain for enemies hit by attacks. Um, and then these are the modifiers that we would accept that can roll on either jewel. 2% uh, attack speed, 3% attack speed with bows, 4% global crit multi, 5% increased elemental damage, 4% increased global damage, or 2% move speed. Um, and uh, obviously the way that you would roll those is by using Vivid Vultures and Krejcik Chimerals. Um, now, uh, after you have rolled your Synthesis mods and you make sure you get that Gilded Fossil on there, you're going to want to go for your Corrupted Implicit. Um, sorry, actually, sorry to rewind for a sec. If you're unaware of how to figure out which Synthesis modifiers, right? So I obviously have a list of the ones that I chose here, but if you want to find out for yourself, uh, the, the most up-to-date one and the easiest one to check is on POEB. Uh, sorry, P-O-E-D-B. Uh, and if you look above me here, you can see I have uh, highlighted what you need to do there. Um, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'll make it a little bigger. So you can see you go to P-O-E-D-B and then you type Synthesis League, right? Make sure you type Synthesis League and then you go uh, to Synthesis Implicit. And then in the top right corner there, you can type the de the the uh, item type that you're looking for. So in our case, it would be Abyss Jewels or Jewel Base. And then it will sort out all the possible uh, implicits for you. Um, now, synthesis weightings are not made public. I have a database that I've collected myself over the past year uh, that gives a rough idea. But if you're just a regular player and you haven't rolled hundreds of thousands of implicits because it's not data mined, the best way to check how what which mod is the rarest um, is just to do a simple uh, matter of relativity check, right? So if I go, if you go to the trade site and and look up, um, you know, global crit multi or sorry, crit multi with bows, right? Um, you can go, you can go to the trade site, right? And then say, okay, I want to see in the whole league, tier one uh, is four to five percent. So we'll check any abyssal jewel that has that, right? And uh, say we also want to see how many with three implicits, right? Okay. So there's 13 of them on trade. Now let's just check with no three implicits because those are going to be more likely to be equipped. All right. So we can see here 238 synthesis mods, or that that mod has shown up 238 times online or offline. If you want, you can also check standard, right? So 115 standard. 
and 238 in league, right? And if we want to compare that, let's say, to global crit multi as a synthesis modifier, right? <clears throat> so with three, three to four percent. So we're going to do the same thing here. We check affliction and we can see that there's 594. 594 jewels online or offline for the abyssal jewels have the crit multi. And then if we go to standard, we can see it's 399. So in both cases, it's almost triple or four times as many, right? So it's not an exact science, but it can give you a good understanding at least of which one is more common than the other. Um, and uh, obviously it's not an exact science and, you know, it's subject to things. Are, do people list them? Are they equipped? Whatever, right? But it's a good thing to check if you're completely new to it um, and your heart set on doing that. It's important. Uh, and it can have drastic economic consequences if you uh, decide to go after the most rare one last, um, especially because the modifiers can replace the previous mods that are on there. Um, so yeah, maybe give that a try if you are interested. Um, and the best thing you can do is just to start to track your own um, results and uh, kind of build uh, some firsthand understanding of it that way as well. Okay, so now that we've done the synthesis mods, again, we're going to be moving on to the corrupted implicits. Um, or sorry, well, of course, you pick your explicits. That's not very difficult. In our both cases here, we have uh, flat life on this one and global crit multi. And on this one, I have percentage life and global crit multi. Uh, uh, one thing that you might want to consider is that uh, if you're playing a life-based build, typically percentage life is a little bit more, effic uh, more efficient because strength gives flat life, right? Um, and so also gear has a, a, a relatively easy abundance of flat life. Uh, whereas the only way to scale percentage life really is through passive points. Um, conversely, if you are playing an ES build, uh, you're typically going to have quite a bit of int and int uh, gives ES percentage. So usually flat ES is a little bit more efficient, which is why pretty much every ES build has to use discipline, right? Uh, especially if the ES build you are playing is very unique heavy because those uniques might may or may not have ES on them. Um, and so that's something you might want to consider with respect to, do you want to roll an Abyssal Jewel or do you want to roll a uh, regular Jewel? Uh, on top of that, another thing to consider uh, is that Abyssal Jewels have flat modifiers and conditional modifiers, uh, whereas regular Jewels do not. Um, so what I mean by that is like, uh, for example, move speed while phasing, attacking cast speed during onslaught. Uh, another example, um, attack speed if you have crit recently. These are all conditional modifiers. Right, those do not exist on regular jewels. Um, as well as when I say flat modifiers, it's flat life, flat fizz damage to attacks, all that kind of stuff. Right, those don't exist on. Um, um, <laughs> sorry, I'll hide my chat here. Those don't exist on these ones either. Um, and then the percentage based ones are on these. Um, however, a lot of the percentage based ones are also on the abyssal jewels. Again, you can check out the modifier list on both of those on Craft of Exile to decide, um, and then make the decision yourself. Now. And crafting these is somewhat different than a traditional craft we might be going on um, with respect to, uh, uh, you know, mirror crafting or whatever. Uh, because when you're mirror crafting, it's absolutely necessary if you want to have a successful mirror craft that you try to make it perfect, right? Because if your item is not perfect, that means somebody can craft one that is better than yours. And the sales traffic of mirror items, uh, it does not, it's not equally distributed, right? The person who has the best one is the one that everyone is going to want to mirror. And so the incentive on the crafter basis is to make it absolutely perfect each time. Now, one thing to consider if you are crafting these yourself is that because they have to be corrupted, it doesn't necessarily really matter if yours is absolutely 100% perfect. Because even if you do have the best one in the game, um, the people that are going to be using these are not going to be people um, that just have like one or two of them, right? They're going to probably have at a bare minimum two one passive voices and they're going to want to use at least six of them, right? And so even if you do have the best one, you might be able to get a higher ticket price on that one. But in, in order to make it absolutely perfect, you probably could have crafted three or four other ones that might just be, uh, that might be, you know, 80% or 90% as good. But overall, the functional side of things, um, your character will be a lot better off. And not only that, you can also sell them for a lot more um, because the people who are going to need to use them um, of course, are going to have to buy them in abundance. Uh, they're very difficult to craft, and the material cost on these goes up exponentially. Um, the two that I have uh, from earlier in the league, I also actually mirror crafted an Abyssal Jewel, which I might turn into another um, adorned one later. But uh, these ones cost me, um, it was about seven mirrors to craft the two of them, right? And in, in, in their entirety, because the price of Vivid Vultures was very cheap, the price of Kratix was relatively very cheap, um, and Hinakora's locks were one seventh of what they cost right now when I did these. On top of that, um, getting synthesis jewels early on is very easy because nobody looks at them, right? I made both of these about like, I don't know, two weeks into league. I actually have a video with uh, one of them. So you can go back through my video archive uh, 
about a month or a month, two months ago or whatever, whenever it was, if you want to watch that video. Uh, but that's something to consider as well. So um, you don't actually need to get 100% perfect on these in the same way that you would with a mirror item. For example, if you look on this one, I only have 2% global crit multi. Uh, and that is actually the high, the perfect roll on that would be 4% global crit multi. So with the adorned, it gives me uh, 5% instead of 10%. So I lose 5 gl global crit multi, but it probably would have cost me between 2 to 3 mirrors. Uh, to use the amount of vultures and cray chicks that it would take just to upgrade that by two. And with two to three mirrors, I could probably craft another one or two um, of the jewels. Now, to put that into contrast, uh, obviously this league has a lot of inflation elsewhere. Um, th these two jewels so far have cost me uh, five mirrors for this one. And this one costs about uh, two, two and a half. So we're at about seven uh, to seven and a half mirrors to craft these without using the locks right which is uh if you were listening the same price that i paid to complete the last ones it's also worth mentioning the first jewel uh of the ones that i've already finished it, it used 130 hinakora as locks uh the average as i pointed out earlier was approximately 68 i think i said right so 68 per corrupted implicit um on average you'll hit one of the four that we're looking for um and so uh right now uh hinakora's locks are 14 they're 14 to one mirror so uh, that means that it would cost approximately six mirrors, which sorry, not six, uh, four mirrors, <laughs> sorry, uh, four mirrors in additional cost to be able to hit the implicit that you want. Um, and the reason for that being in basic terms, um, if we take a look at the uh, list of uh, vol implicits here, you can see that there are 21 of them in total, right? They're each equally weighted with a 1000 weighting. Right, which means that um, you know, if you're looking for one specifically, it's going to be a one in four for the vol orb, uh, one in four for the vol orb to give a corrupted implicit, uh, another one in four for that to replace the gilded fossil line, and then a one in twenty one. Right, so that's that's sixteen times twenty one. Um, so that's what one hundred and thirty. Uh, sorry, three hundred and twenty, three hundred and thirty six. It would take three hundred and thirty six Hinakora's locks on average if you are trying to specifically target one 336 divided by 14 that's 24 mirrors right at current prices so if you're looking for like only rmr it's going to cost you 24 mirrors on average so you can imagine these can get out of hand really quickly with their pricing um which is why uh in my case and i think if you're going to craft these yourself you should also take a list of um corrupted implicits that you would be willing to uh take so for myself on the right here you can see i've underlined the ones in red that I consider to be tier one, right? So the ones that I, I would say are the best. Uh, I've also on my left here, sorry. You can see uh, on the bottom, I have best choices. Um, for those, I have eight to 10% global crit chance, 2% uh, RMR, 1% elemental pen, or four to 5% damage. These are ones that I will 100% take uh, if they replace the Gilded Fossil. And then the ones below that I have, and on my right, uh, so on the left side, it says good choices. And on the right, it'll be the ones underlined with yellow. These are the ones that I consider to be kind of like second tier. They're pretty good, right? If I were using a jewel where I didn't have perfect implicits from synth, I like to say I just settled, or even if I had like a two implicit jewel, those are ones that I would consider to be fine as well. Um, and so obviously you can choose that according to your, uh, your preferences, your currency, how much time you want to spend, all of that stuff, right? But uh, that's the underlying thought process behind mine. And so the last thing to, to, uh, to show before we get started here uh, is the um, waiting. So because there were four of them uh, that I considered to be okay for my purposes, um, or sorry, I had Corrupted Blood included in there. So I had five of them, actually. Uh, if you consider five, if you pick five out of the 21 that are on that list, um, it'll show you right here. It has a one in 17% a chance, which you have to multiply by four because... Uh, uh, craft of exile can't account for synth mods um, and so this is just calculating choosing one of those implicits without uh, having to also replace the uh, one in four synth implicit line so four times 17 um, means that we have roughly 68 hinakora's locks on average to be able to hit one of the modifiers we want Woo! that is a mouthful boys by the way for those of you who don't like these long form videos i figured out how to make youtube shorts uh, I probably should have said this at the start, uh, but in terms of now that we're going to get started with the craft, I've finished explaining it. If you just want to see the end result and you don't want to watch the process in between, I will also upload a YouTube short at the end. There will be a 30 second clip hitting the final result. Uh, the first part of the video as, that we just finished was explaining the craft, why we're doing it, what the odds are. Uh, and now, now we are going to be transitioning to the second half, which is physically doing it. Um, as you can see here, I have purchased 180 Hinakora's locks. Um, and on this one, I have crit multi, crit multi with bows, both tier one, 
movement speed while phasing, um, and then multi and life. All right, so that's going to go to 10% uh, crit multi, 12% crit multi with bows, 7% move speed while phasing, 30% crit multi, 100 to flat life, and then whatever we get for the Gilded Fossil. Uh, this one is attack speed, which will go to 5%, 4% global crit chance, which will go to 10%, 4% global crit multi, which will go to 10%. 12% uh, global crit multi, similar to the Abyss Jewel, which will go to 30%, and then life percent, which will go to 17%. So there we go. We are we are fully ready to go. So um, I am now going to pull back up Twitch chat. I know I had you guys hidden for a while. Uh, I just didn't want to get distracted while I was um, explaining all of that stuff. So I now have you guys up there. People on uh, YouTube, you'll now be able to follow along with these lads as well. And uh, we're going to get down to it. I remember uh, we also did a little uh, prediction on stream uh, to see how many uh, how many gilded fossils on average uh, they thought it would take, or sorry, how many uh, locks on average to finish both of them. Um, and I believe the uh, average choice was uh, 101 to 150. So uh, as we go here, the reason I'm doing two of them at the same time, by the way, is because if I get, as I mentioned, there's a, uh, you know, on on the left here, the ones that are good choices. If I get a good choice, if I hover over this one, right, and I get, let, let's say, a um, chance to avoid poison, and it replaces the Gilded Fossil, and I'm not really sure if that's one that I want to keep, rather than having to commit to that, I can then swap over to the second jewel, and instead of, you know, dumping all 180 into one jewel, I can make sure that I at least cover my bases with the second one first. It just, it, that's a personal preference, but it allows me to be more efficient uh, with the, um, the use of them. That being said, I think everything's been explained, so let's get into it. All right, we got lightning pen. And no effect. You're, you're going to need uh, a fair amount of um, blessed orbs to do this as well. As a way to reset the implicit or to reset the Hinacora's lock. Oh. Do not want it to turn to fragility. Thank you very much. To not be cursed with silence, but again, we got to make sure that it replaces that uh, that line that we want it to replace. No effect. No effect. I may actually need some more. I'm definitely going to need more Blessed Orbs. If anyone uh, who's watching right now on Twitch is in my guild, or um, uh, if you want to type exclamation mark IGN, if anyone can just uh, shuttle me some Blessed Orbs, I can pay for them, of course. Uh, oh, we got a chance to uh, avoid being frozen. But I uh, replaced the wrong line. And this one turned it rare. No effect. Turns it rare. Ooh, I, I didn't realize that my trade's hidden. Coming with Orbs, Dad. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube. I, I thought I prepared everything that I could ahead of time, but <laughs> uh, 
Oh, that's 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 more than enough. Thank you very much. Um, okay, member. All right, ninety-five divines. We can stop for a ninety-five divines hill. March. You're welcome, Daddy Uwu. Just because I leave for a cigarette every once hour, once every hour. All right. Can't call me Daddy, son. All right. Especially because I come back. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, what's this guy get? FSA. Oh wait, what happened? What just happened? I guess he doesn't want it anymore. Is this guy? Uh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna hide chat for a sec. Okay, where'd it go? Is this guy coming to get it or no? Yeah. Sorry about that, YouTube. All right. Inconsiderate jerks. All right, two, four, four. Thank you for bringing the bluff orbs, guys. I'll bring you guys back up. All righty, so um, we are, how many in? We're 12 in so far. Uh, four, five, and three. Two, four, and four. Okay. Turns rare. No effect. We want four, five, three, and two, four, four. Ooh, five percent area of effect. That's kind of a cool one. Not one that we want specifically for ourselves. You can actually get that on a regular jewel as well. So I don't think. Actually, I'm not sure if you can get the same synth and corrupted and blessed. They might be. Actually, no. I'm pretty sure they're mutually exclusive. Because I know you can't get. Uh, there's, you can't get frenzy charge synthesis on a glove and then also corrupt gloves. So. Actually, I do. I, never mind. Scratch what I was going to say. Either way, 12% AoE is a pretty good for an implicit uh, modifier when combined with the Adorned. So we got AoE on this one. Uh, that's not one of the ones that I want, and also it replaced the wrong implicit. Ooh, reduced effective curses. That's actually another one. That's another one that I would consider to be tier 2. I didn't uh, put that on the list for some reason. Um, I must have overlooked that on Craft of Exile, or it might not. Maybe it's not. Isn't sometimes Craft of Exile? I actually, kind of want to see this. Sometimes Craft of Exile is a little outdated. Chance to curses. Uh, yeah, no, Craft of Exile is wrong. Look at that. Craft of Exile is not updated. Reduced effective curses. That is a hundred percent not on that list, right? Yep, that's a mistake. Okay, I'll message the guy. The guy that uh, maintains Craft of Exile, he's uh, I've found quite a few mistakes on it before, so he just gave me his personal email uh, like a, a year and a half ago. Just told me to message him or email him anytime I find any issues like that. So we'll update that. Well, uh, or I'll message him after the video, rather. Okay. Uh, but yeah, sorry, that's also another one that's good. Um, I would still consider that like a, a yellow tier, so a second tier. A, a good one, but not, not one of the ones that we're exactly going after. No effect. Turns unique. Turns unique. And no effect. Uh, again, it's 1 in 16. On average, it takes 16 tries 
right? So one in four gives an implicit and one in four implicits will replace the gilded fossil, right? So we have currently used 22 of them and we have not had that happen yet, right? So we're falling behind the average, but that's okay. I mean, you get like two of them in a row and obviously that, that can offset the next several law of large numbers, just general variance things. Goes rare and no effect again. Uh, as a reminder, every 14 Hinakora's locks that we're using here is a mirror. So, so far we've done uh, 24 of them. So we're uh, just under two mirrors we've spent so far. Uh, and we haven't seen a single implicit modifier. Uh, not Actually, we haven't even, we have not seen a single implicit modifier on our list of good implicits, nor have we had an implicit modifier replace the Gilded Fossil, either or. Um, and I, I'm not saying that uh, in like a, oh, fucking, we, we're having such bad RNG, pity me kind of way, but just as a, you know, if you are going to do, oh, motherfucker! I was saying that more in a, if you are going to do this, um, be aware of that kind of way. We hit 2% RMR. To hit just to hit two percent RMR in general uh, is a one in eighty four. So eighty four logs will be six mirrors. The thing is, I might actually keep that anyways because it's replacing crit chance, which is the least the least useful, right? Two percent RMR is far better than four percent crit chance because the four percent crit chance is only going to give us uh, ten crit chance, right? Which and also crit has a hard cap, whereas two percent RMR gives us five percent RMR. Uh, and it's very unlikely that we hit that again, right? On top of that, um, as I mentioned, it's like if this were a mirror item, right? If this were a mirror item, you would not accept this, right? You would have to have it land exactly where you wanted it. But because it's corrupted, right? Um, it's like you can't, um, you know, it's people can't mirror it anyways, right? And I think that in terms of the value add and also in terms of what the sale price potential would be, that this would be better. Uh, one of the things I mentioned before we started as well, though, is the reason I, I said why I'm rolling two of these at once. This is exactly the situation for what I'm doing that, right? If I were only rolling this one, right? If I only have one jewel prepared and I still had 154 locks, pretty good chance that I would roll over this because I'd be like, eh, I'll probably get something better, right? Without actually, you know, having any... I, I Obviously, I have no idea what will potentially come in the future. That's what happened when I crafted the... Uh, this first one here, right? And so I decided to do at least at least two of them this time, right? So that I, I wouldn't come into that uh, that same predicament because that'll always remain with the RMR there. So we're just gonna hide that into our Wildwood stash for right now. And then we're gonna focus on this one until we get uh, a result here that makes us revisit that, right? But uh, wine and you shall receive. Thank you, Gen Z for the tip. Thank you very much. Might, looks like you guys are onto something. All right. Um, burr, burr, burr. no effect. No effect. Turns rare. No effect. Man, these are... The uh, Abyssal Jewel has been no effect again. No effect again. Turns rare again. How many in a row is that without an implicit on this? This is kind of crazy. I feel like we've gone like a mirror worth of locks without a single implicit again. No effect again. 
Sus. Sus. I summon upon the powers of Generation Z. I will protest your company. I will protest all murderous idols. Give me an implicit. I demand of thee. Fucking Gen Z, baby. <laughs> what the fuck are the odds of that? Come on, man. Uh, uh, cannot be maimed is not one that I want, but it's it's a good it's a good mod though. Um, the ones where the ones where it has like you cannot be corrupted by corrupted or you cannot be affected by corrupted blood, um, or uh, uh, you know cannot be maimed um, or whatever. They don't scale at all with um, the. They don't scale whatsoever with um. Uh, what do you call it? the adorned, right? Because the adorned gives times two point five for like, right? So, cannot be maimed doesn't have any numerical value to it, nor does corrupted blood. Although corrupted blood is, uh, generally speaking, a little bit more useful. Um, although I, I'm of the opinion that you should be getting that on a unique jewel. Um, it uh, it kind of defeats the purpose of you know the kind of the, the court. Like it, it's still. It's better than not having anything, right? Like, it's better than the Gilded Fossil line, for sure. But um, if you have the budget, like, as I do, obviously, we're putting multiple mirrors into this. It would be it would be unacceptable, in my opinion, to stop at something like that. Okay, Overwhelm Fizz Dam Reduction. I find that's... that, that Like, what? <laughs> that's just so funny. Like, literally, I, I can't... Maybe somebody who's watching this on YouTube afterwards can go back and see how many it was in a row that we went without getting... That was for sure. That was our first time ever having it replace the Gilded Fossil. I know that for sure. So that was at least, like, how many in are we? We've used 40 of them. Three mirrors of them. <laughs> Gen Z, they're onto something. Uh, no effect again. Rare. 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 Like, look at this. We still have <laughs> Okay. Goddamn Gen Z. They found they found out I, I evoked the Oh. Done. Ship it, boys. Ship it and clip it, boys. We're keeping it. Um. Uh. Reaction. 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 YouTube Shorts. Thirty second clip. Um. Yeah. No, that's good. I'm. I'm happy with that. Uh. I'm. I'm new to YouTube Shorts. Forgive me. Uh. This is definitely Pog. This is definitely Pog. The way to tell if an item is POG is by linking it in global chat and seeing what people say. Uh, excuse me, I'm looking for a validation. All right, the item's shit. Nobody validated us. Uh, <laughs> I'm just joking, of course. So, yeah, I'll show you guys what this applies. Um, so, we can see here, we throw that in. And from this, we are getting... 42% crit multi, or sorry, 52%, 52% crit multi, 7% move speed, 100 flat life, and 7%, sorry, and corrupted blood immunity. That is a jewel. So that brings us back to our first one. Do we take the RMR? And I, you know, honestly, guys, I think that we do. And I'm going to explain to you guys why. Um, so, sorry, sorry uh, YouTube, I'm going to have to hide you guys for a sec here. Actually, I can put you up in the corner. Or, sorry, not YouTube, Twitch. Put you guys up in the corner here. Um, this, oh, sorry, that's my uh, my mirror one. Let me throw that in there, right? 
uh, if you see here, right, uh, to get a jewel like this is actually on, and I should be um, explain this maybe a bit earlier, on the, the traditional jewels, so you can see uh, like Cobalts, Crimsons, Viridians, um, also uh, you can get um, Prismatic Jewels by selling uh, like rare corrupted, uh, like five times rare corrupted uh, Watcher Eyes or uh, Sublime Visions or whatever, any one of the... Um, those ones, if you want to be able to have access to every single modifier, um, it's not that difficult to get the the global mods on these, right? These ones are actually relatively cheap to roll compared to the abyssal jewels because the abyssals have um, a, a lot more synthesis mods on them, right? So like attack speed with bows exists on both them, but crit multi with bows is only on the searching eye jewel. Attacking cast speed during onslaught is only on the searching eye jewel. Move speed during phasing is only on the searching eye jewel, right? Um, and so th those modifiers specifically are uh, significantly rarer with respect to um, uh, significantly rarer with respect to the uh, synth uh, uh, the synth weightings, like how often they show up. Um, however, if you're rolling a cobalt jewel or a crimson jewel or a viridian or a uh, prismatic, uh, it's not that difficult. You can see on this one actually, this one is basically good to go, right? Uh, this is actually triple tier one, four percent damage is tier one, attack speed with bows is tier one. And crit uh, increased crit chance uh, is also tier one. Uh, this one is actually also triple tier one. Attack speed, attack speed with bows, attack and cast speed. The reason why I'm not, um, the reason why I have not like included these in this this round of them uh, is because crit multi um, for a bow build specifically, but for most builds as well, um, is the hardest mod to scale off of any of them. Um, right, like for if you're playing a bow build, you can use a twelve passive. Uh, or is, yeah, 12 passive item level 84, 35% increased effect uh, cluster if you want to, right? And each one of those gives 4%. You can also get uh, all the attack speed you get from Onslaught and increased effect on the Flask. You can get 17% increased attack speed, uh, which is getting, you know, uh, as a Flask suffix, which then again scales up like that. It's just a lot easier to get attack speed. Crit multi tends to be much more difficult, both on the tree um, and elsewhere uh, and your gear. Uh, so really I do if you are playing a crit based build I suggest having crit multi on them um, on this one attacking cast speed even though it is tier one it's just not very point efficient a cast speed is not completely useless for a bow build because you can use it for flame dash um, but one like this would only scale the two percent attacking cast speed right whereas I can get 10 percent crit multi instead that's a lot better so that's why I haven't done that one and similarly on this one uh, these are actually all good mods um uh, however, ideally, I'd like to be able to either to change crit chance or damage to four crit multi. So uh, that's why we haven't proceeded with those ones. Again, with this one right here, um, it does keep it keeps the it keeps the attack speed, which is going to go to five percent, and it keeps the RMR, which is going to go to five percent, and it'll it'll keep the crit multi. Right? Um, if that RMR did replace the gilded fossil, that would be unbelievably amazing. Uh, but as I said, it's not super expensive to roll these ones, and it is replacing crit chance. So I'm going to go ahead and make the executive decision. Get ready, baby. Here we go. Boom. Boom shakalaka laka. All right. So there we go. We have hit it. Let's see what it does with the adorned. There we go. I am very happy with that. Again, I would have ideally liked for it to replace the Gilded Fossil. Uh, but we did get um, the RMR, which is, uh, in my opinion, the best implicit that, or corrupted implicit you can get. So the total for this jewel is 40% crit multi, 5% reservation efficiency, 17% life, and 5% attack speed. That gives us, by itself, we go from 3,200 life to 3,500 life. All right. And then we have, uh, oh, we have the other jewel that we finished here as well. All right. So let's replace something uh, that we don't maybe need it at the exact moment. All right. Let's get rid of that, which was taken, just so we can see. As well, we're at 3578. Where did I put it? There it is. 3779. So we get another 200 life from this, right? And I know tooltip damage doesn't necessarily mean so much, but that just gives some, some rough idea. We go 30,000 damage from 350. It's like 10% more damage, and not only that, but um, we also get the move speed and the corrupted blood. So that's pretty, pretty nuts. Uh, you can see here our crit multi is at 650%. 650% crit multi. And if we are to remove our four, we so we've now completed four of the Adorn Jewels, we go down to 400. So we're getting 200% crit multi. Uh, as well, our attacks per second goes from... So we get... Okay. 
from four adorn jewels. All right, we go from twenty nine hundred life to what was it thirty seven hundred. So we're getting eight. We're getting eight hundred life. Two hundred percent crit multi. Our attack speed goes from three point eight five to. Four point five. <laughs> so, so that's quite a bit. And then we also get corrupted blood immunity. We're also getting uh, reservation efficiency. We're also getting seven percent move speed. Um, and we also have the attacking cat speed during onslaught, uh, which is again the conditionals. Uh, but 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 we we do have onslaught on right now because of the flask. Um, criminal do with bows. Yeah, that's that's real solid. I'm I'm super happy with that, guys. Uh, as you can see, I do actually have, I mentioned, I've got a couple more of these here. I actually have this one as well. I am thinking uh, you might be seeing a new video soon. And for the people watching on Twitch right now, we might actually just go ahead and do this right away. Um, this is actually a mirror crafted abyssal jewel, um, but it does have the attack and cast speed with onslaught, which is the rarest synth mod that you can get. And it's got the crit multi and it's got the attack speed with both. Ooh, I'm kind of feeling like we should make another one. As you can see, this has a perfect four modded suffixes. It's actually been mirrored five times. Uh, that's tier one flat damage, tier one lightning damage attacks, tier one attack speed if you thought the crit recently, and the crit multi. But the thing is, rolling this as an adorn jewel, it's actually better than it is currently. Also, not that many people mirror abyssal jewels. It's been it's only generated like, I don't know, 100 divines worth of mirror services. And on top of that, on standard, which is coming up fairly soon, uh, the flat damage modifiers, uh, they have legacy versions, which are a lot stronger. Plus, you also have jewels that have um, uh, legacy synth mods and legacy uh, enchants on them. So um, that would make that kind of obsolete. But as a as a corrupted jewel, maybe not. On top of that, guys, as I mentioned, we've got three other ones right here. I've still got 130 locks, and I've still got the capacity to put in two more of them at least. So we can put in two more. We can finish two more corrupt... Uh, Sorry, two more adorned jewels. And uh, also on top of that, I have another little roster of jewels right here that have at least uh, two. Th these ones all have one synth mod on them. Uh, this one right here has two of them. Attack speed with bows and multi. This one has uh, 2.5 because attack and cast speed is tier one. But I said I, I want to get multi on there. And this one's like 2.75. This is actually all three good mods. Um, but again, crit multi is the one that you would want to have the most. So, uh, keep your eyes peeled because we might be dropping another video soon. Uh, I hope the informative side of that at the beginning was helpful for you guys. Um, and I, uh, I will post, um, a clip of, uh, hitting the final ones for those of you, uh, who, uh, you know, if your retention, if your attention span is shit, then go and check the clip. All right. Those people, I was trying to think of a rhyme that was not very clever. I'll come back. I'll come back fresher next time. All right. Uh, for those of you uh, watching on YouTube, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, what was the final cost there? We spent only forty-seven of them, so uh, that means that we uh, used three and a half mirrors only. Uh, and as you can see, we got RMR, which is right at, right at the top of our list. Corrupted Blood, right at the top of our list. Kind of one point five. Or I, I didn't put it under good mods because it doesn't scale off the adorned. But the fact that it replaced the Gilded Fossil, hundred percent. Keep that. Um, to get to get a better modifier than that would cost like it would cost the same amount that it would have cost to recraft the whole jewel. Uh, I already went over this earlier, so I'm definitely happy with that. This one, it's a bit of a bummer that we got RMR. We didn't get to replace the Gilded Fossil, but because it replaced Crit Chance, which can get hard capped, still super happy. Reservation efficiency is fantastic, and the traditional jewels are easier to craft anyway, so no problem. Um, and we've got a bunch of backup ones, so maybe drop another video soon. All right, for you YouTube folks, uh, if you if you haven't uh, liked and sub, uh, appreciate if you could do that. Uh, trying to trying to improve my uh, my YouTube game here with the shorts and stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, keep the duration somewhat sensible. It looks like this is only 45 minutes, which I know is long in general, but it's short for me. So if you want to see more in the future, go ahead and uh, sub and I will try to keep pumping stuff out. We'll be playing for the rest of the league. And, uh, if, uh, again, I, I, I know this is very stupid to say at this, but going forward, guys, if you only want to see the end result, I will be posting them as shorts going forward. Cause I figured out how to do that. Shout out to pirate software. You, the G. All right, take care, guys. Hope you have a great day and a great weekend. God bless.